I think Fashion Week by its nature is, is a youth event in quite a broad definition of that term. Um, youth for us is a slightly different spectrum of age. Uh, you'll see it's a, right from very small kids um, up to mid-twenties where I guess a Fashion Week type of platform would be relevant. So we create um, platforms that, uh, that connect with all of those ages in different ways. Lots of them are in the educational space, but uh, like Fashion Week, um, others that are in the eventing space as well. And obviously you can imagine the kind of content connections you create for a four, five, six-year-old are very different to the kind of things we develop for, um, for young adults. So as a business, we've been around for seven, eight, actually 18 years next month. And like most agencies, we started taking client briefs and making client campaign. And we still do that. To tell you the truth, uh, platform development is very close to our hearts and something that drives the growth of our business, but it's still not the majority of our business. So this year, about 35% of our revenue will come from platforms, and the objective next year is for 40% of it to come from platforms. But we still are an agency who creates um, bespoke campaigns. So I'm going to show you a very quick video of some of the stuff that we do, and it'll include mention of, of platforms, but also client campaigns, and then I'll chat to you a little bit about how the platforms work for us. Embark on a youth market adventure with us at HDI. We love South Africa, we love youth, and we love marketing. We work hard to help brands make meaningful, magical, and memorable differences in the lives and fortunes of our youth. We do this in the schools, streets, malls, and communities of urban and rural South Africa. Our missions to youth space have included exploring entrepreneurial development through the Market Day initiatives of Mnet and Nedbank. The Nutri-Day campaign reaches 1,000 schools nationally. It encourages kids to eat dairy and recycle. The highly successful model building competition draws thousands of entries annually. We want to win that competition! Pick and Pay School Club and its partners reach over 1.8 million learners in 2,500 schools across the country, helping inspire tomorrow's leaders. Always Sharing, sponsored by PMG, empowers young women and is one of SA's longest running and most successful educational programs. Love to Know and Beautiful Beginnings both provide platforms for marketers to connect with teen and preteen girls, teaching them the ins and outs of adolescence and delivering great grooming hints and tips. Intel shows how technology can help create your tomorrow. The multimedia school presentations and more activations show where passion can take youth. Milo Activate takes the message of healthy eating and living to over 300,000 kids annually. The malted drink samples are prepared in our own on-site dairy facility. SAB's comprehensive national program, You Decide, educates young people on the dangers of alcohol and has resulted in real change, with an 8.3% drop in underage drinking in targeted communities. Then there's Mom and Me, Umamanami, and It's Time, all important initiatives focused on early childhood development and brand-powered bonding. The kids really grasp the message because the kids learn by playing. HDI has licensing rights from Dexter to Johnny Bravo, Ben 10 and more. Our experiential events unit has done everything from Mother's Day spin and wins to adventure movie mind blasts to large scale expos. The junior board of directors gives our clients razor sharp insights into youth behavior and culture. We have information at our fingertips. We have access to so many opportunities and uh, it's up to each individual who is in this generation to make use of that. We also developed and run the largest youth consumer study in the country, Sunday Times Generation Next. I feel honored that kids actually switch on their TVs, watch me and think, wow. These and other HDI campaigns get almost 4 million youth excited about brands in South Africa and millions more in East and West Africa every year. 
with youth. Time travels and the future is now. So put on your jetpack, create profit and explore business advantage at the speed of light. HDI Youth Marketeers. Young hearts, brave minds. Cool, so we, we have a very similar resource set to, I think, everybody else in the room. We've basically, as agencies, got very little. We don't have fleets of vehicles or factories or, uh, or expensive plant, but we have talent. And um, I think there's, there's two ways of using that talent, and, and we use it both ways. I think we, we've got a set of passion and a set of time, and that, that is either um, blood, blood, sweat, and tears, or blood, sweat, and smiles, depending on how you look at it. Or it can be passion time, and for us, IP registration. So we believe that the real value in talent is to turn it into intellectual property and register that property, I think, importantly, um, for commercial gain, for ourselves, selfishly, but also because we believe that it's a better way, sustainably, of creating consumer connections for our clients. So. The typical agency model that, that we're involved in as well is we, we take that talent and we sell it once off as a series of outputs or hours. We go, here's a campaign, and the campaign took 400 hours, and that's going to cost you 400 times X. And that gives you a campaign, and the campaign normally lasts weeks or months, and there's absolutely no, uh, I think, debate that that campaign can drive commercial value for a client. On the platform side, though, what we do is we take that talent and we turn it into participation opportunities for clients in IP that we own or at most co-own with the client. And there's a couple of benefits of that which I'll discuss. Now, the selling process is a little bit different. It's always harder to sell something to a client which wasn't briefed by them in the first place. You're not responding to a request of theirs. You're convincing them of a proposition of yours. But what that does is develop a platform, possibly, rather than a campaign. And that certainly, um, the intention is for that to have a, a longer and deeper lifespan than a campaign. So some of our platforms are 15 years old. Vashka was speaking about Fashion Week, Mozambique Fashion Week, moving from 9 to 10 years old. And that's typical. The idea of investing in a, in a platform is for the long, the long term. Because often, there's an upfront investment that you only start um, getting a payback on. Sometimes literally in year one, but that's fairly uncommon, normally in year two or three. So what does it take to get into this business? Firstly, time and belief. It's scary for agencies. It's a complete different uh, change of thought to selling hours um, to meet what clients have given you as a very distinct need of theirs. So you have to um, build a, a paradigm shift into the agency. And it does take time. It's a time-consuming thing to research something enough to believe in it, to spend your own cash on it, rather than the easier option is always obviously to spend clients' cash on it. There's absolutely no question that requires cash investment. And I think Vashko's example of MFW was a great one, where it started off as a client-funded event, MFW, 10 years ago, and turned it, that's kind of the ideal way of doing it, building the property um, with clients' cash. But most of the platforms that we have, <clears throat> We have about uh, nine platforms active this year, but we have over 35 platforms banked and trademarked and owned. Um, and to develop those takes research time, it takes design time, it takes strategic time, planning time. Um, so that definitely there's no question that there's a, quite a biggish upfront investment. And then of course, to protect a, a platform as a piece of intellectual property, uh, you have to know something about trademarking and IP protection. And that really is not as intimidating as it sounds. It requires you having a relationship with a fairly good firm of IP attorneys, and they do lots of the work for you. But you register the name, you register the device, you register the domain. Um, you make sure your, your IP is well protected so that next week there's not a Maputo Fashion Week, also called MFW, with a very similar logo. And basically, you have to uncover a market need. And that's not different to a campaign. You have to find something, if you're building it from scratch, that the market wants. Um, and then you, because you sell it on to clients as a real way of connecting with an audience on the basis of a real uh, consumer need. And it definitely requires a different sales approach. Lots of customization of taking whatever you've done as the platform 
and then mocking it up in very customized ways that show a business advantage to the client who you're selling a participation to. Our largest platform is this one. It's called Pick and Play School Club. Um, it was a, like MFW, it was briefed by the client as a campaign, which we then, in year one, which is 11 years ago now, we decided to turn it into a jointly owned platform. It's an educational platform, obviously, and it produces um, content for, for under-resourced schools in South Africa uh, in the form of teacher guides, learner worksheets, classroom posters, recognition stickers, DVDs, a whole lot of different things which get dispatched to schools in literally a box by what we call school liaison offices uh, between two and three times a year. So Pick and Pay was the founding partner of the, of the platform, but there's now 15, 15 partners on the platform, and Pick and Pay now fund only 33% um, of the costs of the platform. It has huge, huge effect. I mean, we're this year in 2,700 schools. Next year, we'll be in over 3,000 schools and reaching over, over 2 million learners. So uh, often we asked about this, how many South African schools are under-resourced? Um, well, there's 26,000 South African schools, and 23,000 of those by the department's admission are under-resourced. So there's not a question that there's a need, uh, there's a market need, there's most definitely a market need. And each 15 partners on a platform is not typical, and maybe not even ideal, but when you're dealing with the whole set of, uh, of the curriculum from grades one to 12, there's huge areas that each partner can carve off, health and hygiene by Dettel, um, entrepreneurship by Mnet Market Days, Maths and Science by Sassel, et cetera. So it's quite a good, education is a great territory to create platforms in because there's so much scale uh, for participation. And like, uh, like so much of our work, because it's youth-focused, incredibly rewarding to be on the ground um, and be part of. You literally, uh, one of the components of the of school club is, is Hero Awards, which recognizes extraordinary acts in ordinary kids. And that's just a, a component of, it literally is a, a 50 rand shopping voucher from Pick and Pay and a certificate. And we give out about uh, 5,000 of them a year. And they're incredible um, moments of truth and light in, in small little kids' lives, which are memorable for life. I mean, these things aren't forgotten a week or a month later. And Pick and Pay independently has on two occasions tested the efficacy of the platform. Does it create a genuine bond with my brand? And four years ago, that, uh, that index was 64% higher. So it said, I believe in your brand and the brands participating in this program, 64% more than I believe in competitor brands. And last year, that research was redone, and it's now 81% greater degree of affinity for participating than non-participating brands. Mom and Me, you saw a little bit about, and this is like the super cute one. Um, it's for three to six-year-olds, but most particularly, and their moms. So brands in the oral health care, personal health care, nutrient uh, supplementation, etc., get involved in the platform because they want to create uh, an early childhood development connection with small kids but also with small kids' moms. So there's a series of um, shows that go into preschools and classroom material and counting posters and birthday charts, but there's also a reader, which is a bedtime reader for little kids, which moms read and also has tips in that book for moms on whatever it is, toothbrushing, sun care, um, the benefit of Albany as a bread choice or Scott's emulsion as a, as a vitamin supplementation. Uh, Activate's an interesting one because there was this weird coincidence. We pitched Milo. Uh, they'd run a sampling campaign in schools for a lot of years with EXP, and we were invited to pitch, and we didn't have a lot of legs up on EXP at an executional level, but we said there's just this huge coincidence that we own this platform called Activate, which we had just developed, because it so happens that foundation phase kids needed to be able to do eight things to be considered physically fit. Milo also just happens to have eight vitamins and minerals. So we said it's the perfect platform for us to license out to you free of charge, but only for the duration of the relationship between our two organizations um, as the way of, of taking your brand into schools because Milo has sugar in it and schools aren't delightedly opening the doors going, come in and please sell sugar to our kids. Um, but they are opening the doors and going, 
please come tell our foundation phase learners how to do eight things that keep them fit, and you're allowed to let that be powered by Milo. Um, and that's what we do. So we do it, we've done it for two years now, and it's an odd, most of our platforms are collaborative marketing platforms. This is a, a single partner platform where we own the Activate trademark, and it's licensed out without cost um, to Milo, but obviously only as long as we are the execution agency. And this is also really cool stuff. We had to build literally a dairy wet preparation facility at our offices in Johannesburg, where there are people stirring up vats of um, Milo every morning to take 300 liters of, um, of Milo out into field to serve in tiny little 125 mil servings to kids after we've done the Activate show. Data Designer Showdown, oddly, was, this is an example, I think, of a platform built on a, on a, a consumer need. So the two primary forms of self-expression in young people, young adults, age 19 and beyond, is fashion and music. And I think it's exactly the same uh, resonance as MFW, is that there's no real accessible fashion platforms for youth. They're all very snooty, sit next to a catwalk, 100 people, 200 people, clap for a while, um, leave. There's no 21, 23-year-olds sitting in that audience having a great time. So this, this platform was actually conceived three years ago, and we're taking it to market next year. But it's 10 DJs, 10 designers, the ultimate showdown. So it's a short event, televised event, eight-week build-up, six-week post-campaign. Um, but each designer and DJ have a five-minute set where the designer shows the collection, the DJ plays a set, the audience votes and votes them down to three pairs who reshow another collection and another set, and there's an ultimate, uh, ultimate winner from that. So some great learnings from the Mozambican team and a nice area of collaboration because they also came across, I think right from the early days, that there's no ways they could run a fashion event which was pure fashion and no entertainment stroke music. And then Gen Next is a little bit interesting because it's a huge, uh, huge profit-making platform, unfortunately not for us. So Generation Next is an example of investment. So it's a, a research study. It's a very big research study. Uh, this year was its 10th year. And it's now become the authoritative piece of research on youth consumer behavior in South Africa. The shitty thing about it is that um, we have a publishing partner. It's very important that we have the country's biggest newspaper who publish the research as a specific supplement in their newspaper um, once a year. They fund an awards event, so part of it is, the, is the, the coolest brands in 72 categories. That's kind of the tip of the iceberg. The bottom of the iceberg is the bit that we use, all the consumer behavior knowledge about eight to 23 year olds, what they like in competitions, what they're doing on social media, what they're doing in malls, what they do want more of, what they want less of, etc. cetera. And um, Sunday Times fund the event, the awards event, and in return, they collect the ad revenue in the supplement. So the ad revenue in the supplement, uh, the supplement now outsells what used to be their biggest annual supplement, which was Top Brands, which is the adult version of Generation Next. Uh, Generation Next now sells more advertising, interestingly, in the supplement than Top Brands. And that makes about 475,000 US um, dollars <laughs> for the... Um, for the publisher, for Sunday Times. Sadly, it costs us about 50,000 US dollars in hard costs um, to run the study. But it's an invaluable tool for us understanding our market on an annual basis. And it's an investment we're willing to make in both that market understanding and the, the positioning and profiling exercise that it does for us uh, on an annual basis. And those are the trade-offs that at some point you might be asked to make in platform development. But what can you more typically, other than 50,000 US dollar bills, what can you more typically expect to get out of platform development or trading in platforms? First is you can definitely, without I think much doubt, uh, convince yourself that you're creating a deeper, longer term target market benefit. And that has to have a benefit for your clients. The deeper the engagement and the greater the benefit, um, the greater the brand connection, and, and arguably the more you can charge for having created that brand connection. It certainly creates greater agency control. So something that I don't think Bashka spoke about, but I saw was interesting in the video is it started off as a Vodacom property, MFW, then for a while turned into an MSL property and now 
seemingly is, uh, has Vodacom as the, the lead sponsor on again. And that's what platforms allow you to do. If Aquafresh falls off mom and me as the oral care partner, we're fully entitled to invite Colgate on as the oral care partner. If you've got an Aquafresh campaign brief and the brief dries up, you have to start all over again hunting another uh, oral care client. So it definitely puts more of the control in your hands. You own the platform, it's your intellectual property, you trademark it, and you sell it in participation form to whatever clients uh, you see fit. Because they build over time, it definitely normally allows you a greater scale and reach, certainly given the duration of a platform than a typical campaign does. Uh, it does allow for better medium-term profit. There are often, as I said, short-term investments, but within a typical platform, two to three years, that platform becomes considerably more profitable um, than a typical campaign is, because you can sell multiple clients, participation fees, um, which don't obviously individually equate to the cost of the platform, but if you have three partners on a platform, they're still benefiting because they're paying possibly half of what it would cost uh, to deliver that campaign, that platform to their audience as a campaign, but you getting a, an extra 33% of revenue from the third party who jumps on and more from the fourth and fifth and the event partners, etc. And that, of course, builds longer-term wealth creation, and it does it in two ways. It does it by having better margins in the short and medium term, but trademarks and the platforms that underlie them also have bankable, tradable value. So MFW as a brand, uh, as a trademark, as a platform, is probably worth a couple of um, million rands. Our platforms were last valued literally four or five years ago and were worth many, many million rand, millions of rands then because they are intellectual property that can attract revenue, therefore has a future earnings stream and can be valued and, um, and is valued. Uh, so it makes them valuable. Overall, we believe that it's, it's a great rocket launch. I mean, I think uh, Janine yesterday spoke possibly coincidentally about the new age businesses have to build stuff. We can't just continue doing stuff and selling it hour by hour. And we believe in an ideas-based business, the best way to build stuff is to create platforms which are very much within our comfort zone already. We're creating these things very similarly already, but just in campaign format for clients, but rather building themselves, building them for ourselves, owning them, admittedly investing them, and then selling them onto our clients as platforms, vehicles for participation rather than ownership. Great. Thank you. Well, uh, Jason, I guess we had the conversation already on on our arrival day. Uh, are you guys uh, thinking of expanding uh, in other African markets? Because uh, uh, one fact is for sure, Africa, as we saw it uh, the day before, uh, has a large youth population. And DRC, my country, is one, <coughs> one of them, with 65% uh, of the population under 25. Yeah, I think we definitely are. Um we have, as I think the video showed, offices in both East and West Africa. So we've got a Nairobi office which does work in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and uh, Ethiopia. And we have a, a Lagos office which does work in Nigeria. The great thing about platforms is they're also exportable in micro form. So those countries have HDI businesses, but there's nothing to stop us exporting a platform, whatever. Vasco says, I think School Club is an amazing platform, and I want to develop a school club in Mozambique. That IP can be boxed, wrapped, and kick-started by the team who work on it in South Africa in another market. So either HDI can go lock, stock, and barrel into other markets, or bits of HDI in platform format can go, because platforms are much more exportable than, than campaigns. So yes, definitely we've got growth ambitions that include the continent and beyond, uh, and that can happen in both HDI format or particular platform format. Thank you.